You don't need your Chromebook. I just said that. Nolan, you're going to have to finish that later. Okay. So, we do have a lot to do in reading today. We have to finish module two this week. So, normally our modules are in, we do each week a module in two weeks. Evan, did you ask for a designated mass break? Julian, you okay? Okay. So normally we have two weeks for each module, but for week three, we only have one week, which is why we have spelling and grammar in the same module this week, in case you're wondering why. So today we have to learn about our new vocabulary words. I have a small little this or that game. And then we have some new prefixes and suffixes to learn. Then we should be out of time because it'll be almost time for grammar. And you do have vocabulary homework as always. So, first things first is vocabulary words. And we have seven new vocabulary words this week. All seven of them are in our one story because we only have one story this week. So, our first word is seized. Seized. S E I Z E D. It does not have anything to do with seizures. So, don't say that. Seized. Anyone have a guess on seized? Evan, nice and loud, sir. Seized as in, so like, let's say you get cornered or something, kind of like that. Kind of like you get the only, you get seized, kind of like you get cornered or something, except maybe you're not the corner. Mm -hmm. All right, I feel like I know where you're headed, but not, mm -hmm. you're not quite there. I love <laughs> Turn off your mic. Hi, Lynn. Doesn't have to be surprised. Rochelle? What? So, seized. Da 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 da. If you were seized by an idea or a feeling, you were suddenly overwhelmed by it, okay? So if you're seized by fear, you're overwhelmed by fear, you know, you're kind of just like <gasps> in shock. But it doesn't have to always be fear. It could also be, you know, any other type of emotion. If you were seized by an idea or feeling, you were overwhelmed by it, okay? Landon, are you paying attention? Okay, let's hope so. Mark, do you have a question? Or I thought you meant like the C-E-A-S-E-D. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right, our next one, I'm pretty sure everyone should have their hand up. Lillian, his girlfriend. Pretty sure everyone should have their hand up for this. It's hesitate. What does hesitate mean? Lots of you do it all the time. Mrs. Knife does it sometimes when I lose my train of thought. And I'm like, oh, snap. What was I thinking? Hesitate. What is hesitate? Landon? Does not have to be when you lose your train of thought. That's not necessarily what it means. Okay, try again. Um, does it mean No, that is incorrect, sir. Lillian. No. Zach. No. So right there, I just hesitated. See that? I didn't say someone's name. If you hesitate, you wait to speak or act because you're not sure what to do or you're not sure what to say. So hesitating, meaning you wait to speak or do something. That's all it means. You hesitate. Like when you raise your hand because I'm asking you a question and then suddenly you're like, uh, that would be a hesitation. Okay. Or when sometimes I can't decide who to call on, I hesitate when saying a name. I can't decide who I want to call on. So I have a pause and I wait to call on someone that is hesitate. It's a verb. It's something that you do. Okay. Any questions on hesitate? All right. The next one is watchful. And this is an adjective. So this is a descriptive word. You could describe someone as watchful. What do we think watchful means? If I said, oh man, you're a really watchful person. What might that mean, Mark? Careful. True. I like always thinking before you do something. 
necessarily, but I like, I see where you got that. Rochelle? You watch people, basically everything. If you are watchful, you pay attention to everything around you. So teachers are very watchful people because we always see everything you guys are doing. So teachers are watchful. Um, this exam, there's a nice little owl here because an owl is a watchful animal. You know, they're really aware of their surroundings. They see what's going on. You know, they are, don't want to be hurt or anything. So watchful. Okay. Everyone that's leaning, sit up, not nap time. I wasn't talking to you, but thanks anyways. Ella, focus, focus. Look, 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 look. This is going to be, it's not boring, I promise, okay? Because I could be boring and I'm not. So, watchful. I would consider Mrs. Michael to be watchful. Next one, dun, 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 dun. Mrs. Kneifel definitely does this all the time. It is scrawled. And this picture actually might help you. It's a pen and paper, scrawled. If I scrawled something out, what does that mean? Scrawled. Lillian, do you want to give it a try? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Anyone want to add to that, Evan? Uh, not necessarily. So think about what Mrs. Kneifel's writing on the board and I'm like, Ooh, and sometimes you can't read it or I spell things wrong because I'm going very fast. So if you scroll something, you wrote it quickly and sloppy. So just because you write something a little bit messy doesn't mean you scrawled it out. You also have to have that quick with it, okay? So Mrs. Kneifel often scrawls out things because my brain works way faster than my hand and I'm always behind. So my handwriting is always like crazy, crazy messy. So I scrawl things out all the time. It's a verb. It's something that I do. Done. Done. All right. Four down, three to go. Next one. No one knows what this is so far. Totally fine if you don't. It is a ditty. D-I-T-T-Y. A ditty. Does anyone know what that means? Don't look at the picture. The picture is not helpful in case you're wondering. No one. The picture is not necessarily helpful. Zach. It is not. Sorry. Good guess, though. That's a good guess. Rochelle? A what? Nope. The picture is not very helpful. Evan? I'm going to say a sentence and maybe it'll help us. The children sang a little ditty at recess. Kylan? So a ditty is a song or poem that is short and cheerful, like the wheels on the bus, or if you're happy and you know it, those are short songs that are cheerful. You know, they're supposed to make you happy. Lots of little kid songs, or it could also be a poem. So a song that or poem that is short and cheerful is called a ditty. Fun fact. Dun -da -da -da. Next one is refrain, and this does not mean to stop from doing something, so don't say that. Refrain, R E F R A I N, refrain. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na 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 -na. Evan, that was not a Ghostbusters. If you, if you like think about something, or you know, you kind of know what to do. No. I'm going to say my sentence, and I'm going to see if that helps. Her mom sang the verses, and Emma sang the refrain. Does that help anyone? Her mom sang the verses and Emma sang the refrain. Zach. Um, music, like, not the actual song part, but like the back. So what's the part of the song called that's saying over and over? Oh. Anyone know what that's called, Lillian? And Mark, do you know? Like a solo? No, the chorus. Solos when you sing alone. So the chorus is what's repeated. So if you're happy and you know it, the chorus is if you're happy and you know it. That's the part that's repeated a lot. So a refrain is a verse or phrase that is repeated in a song or poem. So basically the chorus. So like, I can't, of course I cannot think of a single song right now. Um, someone's, what? No, that's a theme song, like an actual legitimate song. Someone tell me a song. What? Okay. Material girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, you guys are not in Mrs. Kneifel's type of music. What? Uh, that's not a good one. That doesn't have any refrains. What? Say one. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. So, twinkle, twinkle, little star would be the chorus. That's the thing that's repeated. That's also a, a ditty, though, because it's short and it's peppy. Olive. Is 
Yeah, sometimes that coincidentally happens. So a refrain is the verse or phrase that um, is repeated in a song. So it could also be like a synonym for refrain would be chorus. And then our last one, which a lot of you are in this lovely class for some reason, it is restless. This is an adjective. It's another way to describe people. I would definitely describe some of you as restless. Ava, that's the opposite of sleepy, ma'am. Someone I haven't, Marissa, I'm gonna give it a try. I literally just said the opposite of sleepy. Tired is the same as sleepy. Rest less. Rest less. Angelina, you want to give it a try? Restless means that you haven't gotten any sleep at all. So if you're restless, yeah, you're on the right track. If you're restless, it's hard to relax or sit still. So some of you guys have a hard time just chilling. So I would say you are very restless. I would not, can, some of you guys can chill all the time and that's totally cool. That means you are restful, I guess. So restless, you find it hard to relax and stay still. So those are our lovely words. So I'm gonna go over them again. Seized. If you are seized by an idea or feeling, you are suddenly overwhelmed by it. Hesitate. If you hesitate, you wait to speak or act because you're not sure what to say or do. Watchful. If you are watchful, you pay attention to everything around you, like Mr. Nolan messing with someone that he shouldn't be messing with. That's making me crazy. If you scrawled something, you wrote it quickly and slappy, like Mrs. Kaniva always does, which I should get better at. I'm just not. Nolan, did you not just hear me when I told you to put that away, or did I just say that to myself? Let's put it away. Thank you. A ditty. A ditty is a song or poem that is short and cheerful. Refrain. A refrain is a verse or a phrase that is repeated in a song or poem. And lastly, restless. If you are restless, you find it hard to relax or stay still. So now I have a tiny little one-two game. Everyone hold up the number one. Now everyone hold up the number two. Those are your two options, either one or two. No voices, just your hands, one or two. So what's going to happen is I'm going to read you a vocabulary word, okay? And then I'm going to read you two sentences. And you're going to pick which sentence best explains the vocabulary word, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so the first word is hesitate. So which sentence goes better with hesitate? Is it, I wait nervously in the doorway before going inside, option one, or option two, I unlock the door and quickly go inside. Which one goes better with hesitate, one or two? Number one, I wait nervously in the doorway before going inside, or two, I unlock the door and quickly go inside. Option one or option two? I am seeing this. Most of us vote for option one, and you are correct if you voted for option one. Because if you wait nervously, you're hesitating. You're like, oh, I don't want to go in the door yet. But if you unlock the door and quickly go inside, there is no hesitating. You just rolled right in. Number two is scrawled. The word is scrawled. Option one. Jason could barely read the handwriting on the note Kaylee left. Or two, Jason carefully typed up his story just in time for class. Which one of those has to do with scrolling something out? Option one or option two? Jason could barely read the handwriting on the note Kaylee left him. Or two, Jason carefully typed up his story just in time for class. You should have voted option one because option two, he typed it. If you're typing something, you're not handwriting anything. So it cannot be option two. It has to be option one and he can barely read it probably because she sloppily wrote it, right? So the answer is answer number one. All right, number three is watchful. Our cat pays no attention to us. Or two, our cat follows us from room to room. Option one or option two. Our cat pays no attention to us, one. Option two, our cat follows us from room to room. I should see your hand. What are you doing, one or two? The correct answer is number two. Our cat follows us from room to room. That means they're watchful. They're, the cat's coming, you know, it's following you around. It's being watchful. The next one is C's. This one's a little bit tricky. Some other, um, some other classes had a struggle with it. Nolan, put it away. You don't need to play with it. Landon, stop touching whatever you're touching. Every time I look at you, you're touching something different. It's have, yeah, but five seconds ago, you were just messing with your lanyard. Let's just have our hands still. 
Evan, can you sit down, please? All right, seized. A sudden hunger hit me, and all I could think about was food, or delicious aromas from the kitchen had me looking forward to mealtime. Remember, if you're seized by something, you're overwhelmed by it. So is it A, a sudden hunger hit me and all I could do was think about food? Or B, a delicious aroma from the kitchen had me looking forward to mealtime? Give me your best guess, friends. Don't look around. Just do your personal best. The correct answer is number one. Because a sudden urge hit him about being hungry. And then that's all he could think about was food. So he was overwhelmed by, you know, of his hunger. He was overwhelmed by it. Our next one is Diddy. Remember, a nice, cheerful, short song. So, Desmond sang a silly little song as he did his chores. Or two, Desmond read a short story instead of doing his chores. Give me a vote, one or two. The correct answer is number one because he said a silly little song. They both were short, a short little song or a short story, but the one said silly, which kind of gives it away. Restless is our next one. After a long run this morning, my dog was exhausted. Or when my dog can't sit still, I know it's time to take him out. What do you think? After our long run this morning, my dog is exhausted. Or when my dog can't sit still, I know it's time to take it out. What do we think? Can you say the word again? Restless. I'm seeing people voting. The correct answer is two. The dog can't sit still, which is literally what restless means. You're having trouble relaxing. And our last one is a refrain. Okay. Last one. The songwriter wrote the first line of her song in an old notebook. Or can you remember the words she repeats in the song's chorus? Refrain. The songwriter wrote the first line of her song in an old notebook. Or can you remember the words she repeats in the song's chorus? You should be holding up two fingers or should have typed in number two because literally I said refrain could also be called chorus. So obviously the word chorus or repeated, which is also what a refrain does, should have been a giveaway. All right. So that was just a little bit more on our vocab. So you do have a vocabulary assignment. It is same as it always is. It is, there are seven words. You have to pick four of them. You have to put them into sentences. Remember capital letter. You're not doing it right now. So close your Chromebook. Reading is not over. Miss Marissa, close your Chromebook, okay? We still have lots of reading to do. I'll close it all the way. Thank you. So it is the same as always. Capital letter counts, punctuation counts. Make sure your sentence makes sense and make sure it goes along with our actual vocab words. And try not to add ED or ING or anything. I want you to keep the word as is. Rochelle? You could always do more, yeah. Um... And make sure you're spelling the word correctly. It is due by Wednesday morning at 7.45 a.m. But now we are moving on to our new suffixes. I need some lovely person to remind me where on earth a suffix goes. Because Mrs. Kneipel just does not remember. Where does a suffix go, Miss Ava? Yes, you are correct. Suffix. Is equals N. A prefix is at the beginning, and then the root is normally in the middle. So we have four new suffixes to learn. Our first one is full. F U L. So first things first, can anyone tell me a word that starts or that not starts because we're doing suffixes that ends in F U L? What's a word that ends in F U L, Olive? Rochelle. 
hopeful. Anyone at home have anything, Mark? I don't know if you would count this, but mouthful or no. Oh, yeah, that counts. Okay. Uh, body in the full on the end. Mouthful. Zachary? What? Helpful. Helpful. Okay, that's plenty. So that literally took us 30 seconds, and we already have beautiful, hurtful, colorful, cheerful, joyful, playful, hopeful, mouthful, helpful. So sometimes when we add suffixes, it changes words from like an adjective to a noun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this one actually has a meaning, and it is two words. Does anyone want to guess the meaning of full? Anyone want to guess the meaning? It is two short words. Evan, you want to give it a try? Yeah. No. Yeah? Full means like um, another. No, you just guessed like free means again. So it's like that. So what does full mean? Julian? It doesn't have to be how you feel. Yeah? Like emotion. So, hey, you are not paying attention with what you're doing. So just focus, buddy. So if you are, if something is colorful, it is blank, blank color. If you are joyful, you are blank, blank joy. Rochelle? It's like a lot, but not a lot. It's really like a, kind of a dead giveaway. It is a, um, you guys are probably thinking too deep. If you're hopeful, you're full of hope. If you have a mouthful, your mouth is full. If you are helpful, you are full of help. If you're cheerful, you're full of cheer. If you're playful, you're full of play. So full means? Full of? Full of. Full means full of. You're full of cheer. You're, if you're hurtful, you're full of hurt, etc., etc. So. Full equals full of. Nod your head if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, our next one is less. L-E-S-S. -S. Does anyone know a word that has less at the end of it? Less. Less. Kylan. Helpless. Helpless, yep. Landon. Hopeless, Hopeless yep. Zach. Uh, um, Ava. Homeless, yep. Rochelle. I cannot hear you. Restless? Restless? Yeah, look, she just used our vocab word. Go her. Evan. Unless? Uh, no, because if we took out less, it would just be on, and that's not a word. We could say, that's not what I wanted. We could say useless. Countless. Nolan? Pageless. Pageless? Yeah. Ava, or um, Ella? Sheless. Sheless? She Sheless. Sheless. That is not a word. That would be like sad. Good, good guess though. Careless. Careless? Yeah, that's a good one. Colorless. Mark. Countless. Countless. All right. So, once again, we made this big old list. Helpless, hopeless, joyless, homeless, restless, useless, pageless, careless, colorless, countless. Okay. So, by adding less, what does that mean? If you are homeless, you are blank a home. It's one word I'm looking for. It's one word. So if you're not thinking one, only one word, it's not right. Oh. Ava, you want to give it a try? That's a good guess, but no. Uh -huh. It's a compound word. Anyone? You are blank a home. You are, Mark? Without. Yeah, it is without. Woot, woot. Everyone, air five mark. So, if you are hopeless, you are without hope. If you're joyless, you're without joy. If you're homeless, you are without a home. So, full means full of, less means without. Okay? Okay. Our next two suffixes change like a 
word from like an adjective to a noun or whatever. They don't have a necessary like meaning like these two, okay? But our next one is meant, M-E-N-T, meant. Does anyone know a word that has meant on the end of it? And don't just say the word meant because that wouldn't be a pretext. That would just be the word. So, basement. Ava. Payment. Evan. Pigment. Yeah. I don't think that's how you spell that. It's P A G M T. Taking that one back. Payment. I'm thinking of the words I was thinking of. Movement. That's a good one. About agreement or treatment. Ooh, argument. Argument. Landon. Movement. I literally put that down already. Statement. Improvement. All of those. What? All of those have meant at the end of them. So Usually, now, of course, there's, like, rules to anything. Amusement, excitement, all of those would have worked, too. Yes. What? Yeah, shipment, all of those would have worked. So, normally, obviously, there's, you know, it's exceptions to every rule. But for the most part, when you add meant, it changes a verb to a noun, okay? So, for example, if me and Landon agree... That's something that we do. That's a verb. But by adding M-E-N-T, an agreement is a thing that we have between each other, okay? So sometimes, obviously, like I said, it doesn't always work. But for the most part, the general rule, by adding M-E-N-T, it goes from a verb to a noun, okay? Thumbs up. Evan, what's up? I have that down. Right there. All right, our final one is next. N-E-S-S. -S. Ness. What's a word that ends with ness, Lillian? Coldness. Restlessness. Kylan? I don't know if kindness is a word. I said yeah. We'll look it up, okay? Someone look that up. You look it up for me. Google hotness. Yeah. Sadness. Um, Evan. Unfairness. Fairness. Or it could be, we could add UN in front of that too. Nolan. Happiness. Happiness. Hate. Zach. Nonsense. That doesn't end with N E S S. That just. Spelled a different way. Yeah. It is? Okay, sweet. Hotness is a word. Um, rudeness or greatness. Obviously, there's tons and tons of words, but for the most part, when now it does not always come true, but for the most part, if we take happy and hot and rude and great and sad and rest, or not rest, take out rest, that's not a good one, cold. What are those? Without the N-E-S-S, what type of words were those? Sad, cold, happy, great, hot. What type of words are those? Without N-E-S-S, Rochelle? They're adjectives. Adjective to adjectives are describing words, and then we change them to a noun for the most part, okay? So, quick five-second review. Dun -da -da -da. Full means full of. Correct. Everyone say full means full of. Shut Thank your you. computer. Thank you. Less means without. 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 For the most part, meant means a verb to a noun. noun. And ness means adjective to a noun. a noun. So go all of us. You just learned four more. Um, well, we'll do that someday, Mark, but not today. We have so many more roots and stuff that we'll learn throughout the year. Ava. We will not have time today, but I think we're going to have time tomorrow. So remind me tomorrow. We should have time tomorrow afternoon. So now, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, we 
are going to have a story. Our story is only one story this week, and it is a poem. It's poet. Would you like to leave my classroom? No. Well, then chill. It is poetry. I think it's a good one. It's actually called The Poem That Never Ends. So starting tomorrow, we're going to learn all about poetry and different types of poetry. And tomorrow, I will also tell you about an extra credit opportunity. Dun, 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 if you're into that. But right now, reading is about to be over. Stop. Stop moving. You don't even know what we're doing. Take a chill, but just stop. Just listen. Okay. Okay. So at two o'clock, we will have a live grammar lesson for those of you that are on right now. At two o'clock, there's a live grammar lesson. Until then, you may work on your vocabulary sentences. Are there any questions, anyone in class or anyone on live? It's under rotation one that says vocabulary. The vocabulary is due on Wednesday. If you don't have any questions, you can do that at two o'clock. Get back on for grammar, okay? At two o'clock, get back on for grammar. So long.